Hi there, today we're unboxing a Wi-Fi switch. So this particular one is by Sonoff and details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So Sonoff has been doing these types of Wi-Fi switches for a while now, but this is an evolution to their existing models. And this one actually has accurate power measurements built into it. So let's have a quick look around the packaging. It comes nicely packaged in a very small compact box. Some details there, so works with IFTTT, Amazon Alexa, the Nest, and Google Assistant. Picture of the actual switch itself. If we come around here, some details here on there. Ewe Link is the app you'd use to control this remotely. Couple of things about the actual device. So remote control via a mobile device, timing schedule, so you can set timers on there, power measuring, and smart scene. Okay, bring it round just to show. It only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi model on this one is POWR2 power supply 100 to 240 volts AC max current 240 15 amps and max power is 3500 watts so you've got to be considerate of these values if you do go for something slightly higher in terms of wattage it may cause problems with the actual unit okay let's turn it around and come around the other side and that's it. Let's open it up and see what we get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging, so let me quickly go through them one by one. So initially we've got a piece of paper that says qualified certificate and it's a quality control pass. Details there on the back, warranty card. No additional details regarding warranty, I have to admit. Then Got a piece of paper here with some details in German, it seems. Let's flip that over. Okay, and then finally we've got the manual, which is this one here. Okay, let's just open that up. One side's in English, obviously showing the cloud connectivity app you're supposed to install and terminals on the device and how to connect it up and wire it up. Okay, picture of the device itself and some additional warning details. If I flip over, you've got details in Chinese on this side. Okay, so next, let's take a look at the actual switch. So larger than what I expected, I thought it may be smaller than this. Let me give you the dimensions of it. So in terms of height, you're talking about 11 and a half, right to the top. And then the actual thickness of this is a little bit over three centimeters and the width is approximately five centimeters. Okay, looking on the actual top of the device, some details there which I've already mentioned, the model, in fact it only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, input, output, which I've already mentioned. What's quite interesting about this particular device, as opposed to the other smart switches out there, is the fact that it's actually got a terminal for Earth, it seems, from the actual picture here. So interesting to see, and actually good they've introduced this because other devices haven't had this, either Sonos branded or other brand devices that I've seen. Okay, so in terms of connectivity, you've got a button here. Obviously that must be a reset button to enable you to connect it. And you've got a screw here to connect your terminals onto. Okay, so if we've got a screwdriver and just quickly open that up, Okay, just to show you a close-up of that. So quite tight to get your fingers in there, I have to admit. So a bit too much to the edge there, and that much a bit too much to the edge. But you can still just about manage it. Maybe a bit tricky for me to do it with the camera in the way. But there you go. So live out is there. Neutral is there. And live in is there. So, and finally earth. So pretty straightforward, and we'll look here. So live out, neutral, neutrals paired together, and obviously one live out and one live in. Okay, that's it really. Looks straightforward, nothing too complicated about it. Small hole here. Doesn't look like there's a button behind it, so not quite sure what that's for. But that's it. Okay, so let's make a start at setting this up to show you it in action. So I've got a lamp here with an LED light on there. I've taken the plug off the actual cable going into the lamp 
and I've got another cable here with a three pin plug on the end. So let's wire this up. Pretty straightforward. Both these cables actually don't require an earth lead, but obviously I have mentioned you've got earth available there. Now in terms of output, so obviously that's the, the lamp itself. So if I hold on to the live button at the side, let's make sure these wires are tidy before I try inserting them. So if I hold on to that and try pushing the wire in, so this is the live one going in first. Okay, so that's slotted in. Next, we've got the neutral to go in. So I'll put that just at the end here, so it's out of the way. Okay, so there you go. Two cables are now inserted. Next one is the actual input. So that will be the wire I have here with the plug on. So that should be straightforward if I hold on to the neutral in this instance. Let's get the neutral inserted. There you go. Both wires are in now. Just to show, it's a little bit fiddly to push it down. You could use a screwdriver to help push it down. Obviously, I wanted to show it close to the camera. It is a bit tricky, obviously, with the camera in the way, but there you go. It's in firmly secured. So just a note, input there, live, which is brown, blue, goes to the neutral, and the neutral on the output goes there as well at the side. and output live is the lamp wire so there you go so next let's put the plastic cover on so if I move these wires to the side slightly okay there you go it's attached I can probably tidy it a bit better than this but sufficient for our needs just to show a demo of how it's working Okay, so let's make a start at setting up this device. So, initially, with the actual wiring connected to the device, let's plug in the plug that we've got wired in. Okay, so that's now connected to the mains. If I press the button that's here, it'll turn on the light. A blue, uh, sorry, a red light comes on. You can see a blue light flashing there in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity. If I press the button again, red light goes out and obviously it turns it off. So this is like an override button and a configuration button. So next, let's move on to setting up the app. So if I go to the Play Store on my Android phone, search for eWe Link, which is this app, and let me click Install. Okay, so now the app's installed, let's click open. Okay, read the actual service agreement and privacy policy, and then you can skip through that and then agree and continue. Next, I need to register an account. So if I click the register button here, enter in my details, so let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've registered my account and we're gonna log in. So let me click the login button here. Okay, this is what we initially presented with. So to configure the device, we want to click the plus icon. Okay, it needs to be in quick pairing mode, blinking as indicated there. So looking on here, it doesn't seem to be in that sort of mode. So let me hold on to the button for a few seconds until the actual blinking changes. Okay, it's changed now. So let's have a go. So if I click next, it's asking for my Wi-Fi password. So let me enter that in off camera. Okay, so I've entered my Wi-Fi password. Let me click next. And it needs permission to the location. So it's actually on at the moment. So I can just click okay and allow. Let's give it a moment to attempt to connect. Okay, so it's found the device and there it is. I can edit the name if I want to. So I can call it, for example, Smart Lamp. So if I click Complete, there you go, it's added. Click Got It, and there you go. So if I click the Off button there, it turns on. Press it again, turns off. Let's turn it on 
and go into it. Okay, so as we're in the device, this is what we're presented with. So quite interesting, you've got power there, watts, gives you a real-time value there, so 1.79, amps is 0 0.0506, okay, voltage is 244.01. You've got a button just below to enable you to turn it off, turn it back on again. Statistics down here, data is upload, updated every five minutes on this one, so you can start this and sync if you wanted. Okay, then you've got overload protection, so you've got to put in some parameters there to avoid it uh, being used to an extent where it could cause damage to the actual device. So there are instances where people have used higher rated items on devices like this and they've sort of burnt out. So really good they've actually got that just to avoid those sort of situations. Share, so you can share the device with other people. Schedule, so you can schedule a timer. So you've got month there, day, hour, minute, you can say the year as well, interestingly enough. Repeat, so you can say if you want it once only, the timer coming on, or do you want it repeated on a certain day. Then you've got state selection. So if you have got it turning on, you'll probably want to set another timer to have it turning on off as well. Very straightforward. Okay, let's go back. Loop timer, so you can have it on a loop coming on at a certain period. And that's it. Okay, so now if I go into the corner here where the eye is, tells you the actual details of the product. So we know it's the model POWR2. If we go in the corner here, you've got settings. So let's go in there first. So details about the products, obviously the name of what we've called it, brand, device ID, MAC address, firmware version. There is a new version available, which they've already said electricity rates so you can say how much this is costing you power on state disable indicator okay so that's the actual light on the device okay let's go back if we go to here you've got history record so it gives you a history of the usage it's a very good functionality in here i have to admit you can go through the different months okay if i go back if I click on there, record the downloads so you can bring them down. Okay, and it saved it. If I click again, you've got delete, so you can delete the device. Okay, and that's all the options you have available. Okay, so there is a firmware upgrade available, so let's go and update that. So if I click here, settings, and we click on the firmware version, and click OK to that. Okay, let's give it a moment to update to version 2.8. Okay, successfully upgraded. You can go back now. So obviously getting the latest firmware would ensure any bugs that are there will be fixed. And there you go. You can see a stabler reading appearing on there. So obviously worth doing that update. Let's go back and that's all we have. Okay, so for our next test, what we're going to do, we're going to test the remote connectivity on this. So if I drop down here, turn off my Wi-Fi, let's give it a moment to connect to 4G. Okay, it looks like it's connected. Let's click the power here. There you go. Works straight away. No ports to open on your router. Turn it on again. Working fine. Click in there, and there you go. You can see the power usage. Okay, so next I'm going to show how to set up this device to work with both the Amazon Alexa and the Google Home. So on my Android phone, I've got the Amazon Alexa app installed, so let me start that up. Okay, now it's started. If I click in the corner, click on Skills and Games, and we search for EWE Link. Okay, so that's the skill we want, EWE Link Smart Home. So if I click on that, click Enable to Use. Okay, so next I need to add in my account details for this. So let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've entered in my details. If I click login. Okay, so it's been successfully linked. If I click on the cross and needs to discover devices. So let's give it a moment. Okay, there you go. Devices have been discovered. I've got other devices connected via this. So let's go to devices and could be under switches, I'm guessing. So if we go, and there it is, smart lamp. So if we click on that, let's give it a moment to connect. 
Okay, there you go, it's connected now, took a while. If I click there, turns it off. Click it again, turns it on. Got settings there, so it just says it's connected with the Ewe link. Okay, you can edit the name if you wanted and give it another name if you desired. Uh, create a routine, so you can create a routine where if a certain event occurs, you can have it coming on or off. Okay, simple as that. Now if I go back from there, and we unmute our Amazon Alexa. Okay, so we can say, turn off smart lamp. Okay. Turn on smart lamp. Okay. There you go, simple as that to set up and configure with the Amazon Alexa. Okay, so next I'm gonna show how to set up this device with the Google Home. So I've got the Home app here on my Android device. If I click it to start it up, we wanna click on the icon at the bottom right hand corner, click on settings, followed by assistant, and then home control. Then we wanna click the plus icon, and we wanna search for smart we link that one there okay so now I've selected it again it's gonna ask me for my credentials for the ewe link so let me enter in those details off camera okay so I've entered in my details let me click login we want to click login to that as well just to authorize Google to access it let's give it a moment to link And there you go, added in as simple as that. So you can assign it to a room if you want or just click done, click understood. If I scroll down to the bottom, there you go. Smart lamp, you can change the name here as well if you wanted. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, and we go back into it. Then if I scroll down, There you go, smart lamp. So I can turn it off from here and then I can turn it back on again. Then if I click it, this is presented to you. You can add it to a room from here. You can go to settings as well. And if I click the button in the middle, it turns off and turns on. Simple as that. Now, if I unmute my Google Home, the microphone is back on. we can say, Turn off smart lamp. All right, turning off the smart lamp. Turn on smart lamp. Okay, turning the smart lamp on. There you go. Simple as that to set up and configure with the Google Home. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this Wi-Fi switch by Sonoff. Really impressed with this bit of tech. Have to admit, a big leap forward for them. The fact that they've added in the energy monitoring on there and the overload protection. I think that's a massive leap forward for all these smart devices out there. A lot of them don't actually have earth connections, but this one does. So really impressed by this. Can be controlled remotely as well. So no need to open any ports on your router as well. And simple to configure on the both Amazon Alexa and the Google Home. So there you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like and subscribe.